Hello everybody watching on YouTube and welcome to race number 23 of season 4 of the NNSCRA Marvel Studios Cup Series. I'm Levi McIntyre, the voice of the NNSCRA Marvel Studios Cup Series, here to welcome you to the LifeLock.com 400 here at Michigan International Speedway as we are getting set for 30 laps of racing at this two mile racetrack. But as usual, before we look at the starting lineup, we have to take a look at how the chase standings look coming into the race today. When I mean chase standings, the people who are currently in the chase before the chase begins. So after last week at, at uh, Oswego, Joshua Sakuli lost a big chunk of his points lead, now only leads by two points over Tim Fiegel. Third is William Brock, fourth Dylan Young. 5th, Chris Dollerton, 6th, Dylan Poteet, 7th, Sean Galligan, 8th, Kyle Matthews, 9th, Jessica Sheldon, 10th, James McLeod, 11th, Dylan Throw, and then 12th, Trent Dunham. Currently, the two wildcard drivers are Zach Flickinger and Dylan Jacobs for having two wins outside the top 12 in the top 30 in points. Still got a few more races left for guys with a win already to try and get a, a, a second win or for those two win drivers to get another one to get a possible guaranteed wild card spot in the chase. Nonetheless, let's take a look at the starting lineup. Starting in the last row is Kyle Matthews and Chris Dollerton. Top 10, Jake Baskinger is on the pole for today. Starting next to him is Charles Sanfer. Row 2 will be Jake Rogers and the points leader Joshua Sakuli. Row 3, Emmanuel Hartnett, Jackie Tang. Row 4, James McLeod, Preston Blord. And then row 5, Seth Cole and Dylan Young. But let's go ahead and get the command to fire engines for the LifeLock.com 400 at Michigan. Drivers, start your engines. All 42 drivers rolling on the racetrack for their one pace lap. So currently as far as like best stats so far this season, as we have gone way past the halfway point, right now the driver with the most wins is actually a four-way tie. Dylan Jacobs, Zach Flickinger, Dylan Young, and Kyle Matthews each have two wins. Most top tens currently, it is Chris Dollerton with eight most top fives, it's a tie between Charles Sanford, Dylan Jacobs, and Dylan Young with five. Best average finish of the drivers in the top 30 in points. Right now is William Brock at a 16.86. Most polls this season so far is Dylan Young with five, which is a record so far in this series. That is the official record of five total poles earned this season by that two team as they have been killing and qualifying and they're starting in a pretty solid spot in 10th however on the outside lane and the outside lane here doesn't really quite hold up as much as the bottom lane does but nonetheless we'll see how the racing will play out as the pace car is pulled into pit road and you all know what time it is it's time to boogity 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 go racing.
close at the line right there, but it was Jake Rogers who led the first lap. And I believe he started on the outside lane, from what I could tell. And right there you can see the outside lane does get a bigger run off of turn two. However, they're both somewhat even off of three and four. But let's see if Baskinger can actually clear the 56 off of turn four. And he actually does. So perhaps here in the early going on fresh tires, the outside lane's going to get the better run. But perhaps if we see this run progress under green flag conditions, perhaps we'll see the bottom lane kick in a whole lot more and see what happens. And James McLeod's trying to get that bottom lane to work, and he is hanging on underneath the 56, but the 56 right now just gets that bigger run off the corner on the outside, carrying more speed. As meanwhile, Jake Baskinger still hanging on up front here for the race lead. And meanwhile, battle raging on for third between James McLeod and Joshua Sakuli. And Sakuli is the points leader coming into this race, and he has been the points leader for quite a few weeks. McLeod, on the other hand, is looking to try and maintain top 12 in the point standings. He fell to 10th after the last race we, we ran, which was Oswego. As back up here at the front, Jake Rogers has taken the lead back. And I thought I saw a car get up into the wall, and I think it might have been the 78 of Dylan Jacobs, although I don't see any damage. Because I did see him go really up high close to the wall a half a lap ago. But meanwhile, up here at the front, Joshua Sakuli led that lap and has now got the race lead, but he doesn't have the 56 cleared yet. And now he does. Oh, and Rogers actually got up into the wall a little bit. I feel like that's what I thought I saw happen with the 78 of Dylan Jacobs. And it looked like it just happened right there for the 56 car. Meanwhile, James McLeod has now moved himself up into the second position. And then back here, a battle for fourth between two Joe Gibbs cars, Jake Baskinger and Emmanuel Hartnett. And now Hartnett's going to be in a, the outside lane of a three-wide situation. And so far, the racing up here at the front's been really clean, but really good. So double the three-wide action all throughout. Oh, and Face Puncher looked like he got the wall a little bit himself. It seems like whenever they're in a three-wide situation, the car on the outside gets a little bit loose off of turn two and gets up into the wall a little bit, but still is able to maintain momentum. As we see all this taking place. But right now, Joshua Sakuli. In that number 82 Red Bull Toyota, looking for his second win this season. I can't quite remember where it was he got his first win this season. But right now, he is, like I said, coming into this race, the points leader. And right now, the top two have actually have started to pull away from the rest of the field. As you can tell, a big gap has sort of emerged as a result. Although, it might get shrunken, the gap might get smaller because, look at this up here, James McLeod trying to go for the lead underneath the 82. But right now, they're relatively even side by side. And as you're going to see, that 82 just gets that bigger run off the corner and is going to keep the spot. Although, McLeod is not going to give up easily. And that did help to bring pretty much the rest of the field kind of back up to them. Just a little bit, but not all the way up there. But another important factor here at Michigan you got to keep your eye out for is pit stops. As far as when the pit stops will occur and who will be coming in in groups. Or will they all come in at the same time. And usually at Michigan there tends to be about three, maybe at most four groups of cars that come in the pit road. And depending on when they pit, we may see one or two different pit stops here today. So far we are still clean and green here at Michigan as we're almost a third of the way through 
this event. But keep in mind, the next race we have coming up is Watkins Glen. And actually, after this race is over, there will only be three races left until the chase begins. And if I can remember the uh, rest of the regular season schedule off the top of my head, I believe we have Watkins Glen coming up next. I believe we also have... I can't remember what's after Watkins Glen, but I know the cutoff race is Darlington to Southern 500. I do know that for sure, or at least I think. Meanwhile, back up here at the front of the field, Sakuli still hanging on to the lead. McLeod is kind of hoping for the guys behind him to kind of reel him in so they can kind of get a draft going so that way they can get a better run on the 82. Oh, a little bit kind of messy back here with Dylan Young and Preston Florida. It looked like Dylan Young kind of got into the left rear quarter panel a little bit of the 24 to kind of move him out of the way so he can try and take that spot. And I believe that was for the sixth position right there. Meanwhile, Phil Parker sticking his nose down there on the very bottom of the racetrack. Although, I think he drove it in too hard and is now going to lose a couple of spots. Two Red Bull Racing teammates working somewhat together to get up here. Ryan George, the 84, and the 83 of Dougie Shears. And I think pit stops are about to happen. I see a lot of cars slowing down to try and come in. And the first taker is the 18 of Jake Baskinger as I'm actually trying to get to them. But that just sort of separated the field. Yes, it was the 18. And not very many cars came in this time around. So it, this almost kind of guarantees we're going to get another round of pit stops. And while we're under these pit stops, we're going to take a commercial break. We'll be right back, but you'll still see the action on the bottom of your screen. Oh, no, no, Dylan. Don't, don't you do it. Don't LePage the field. Please think about it. Think about your friends. Think about the other drivers in the field. You're probably going to get them all to hate you and you won't be loved ever again. No, don't do it, Dylan. No. <laughs> Why did you LePage the field, Dylan? Why? Why? <laughs> Attention Marvel Studios Cup Series drivers. Do not lepage the field under any circumstances, otherwise everyone's gonna hate you. Hey, dramatic commercial sell, baby. Yes! Hey you, are you tired of watching stupid YouTubers like the Paul Brothers? Yeah! Well then, check out the Kamikaze Games YouTube channel. If you want to watch classic gameplay videos like these, Fucking stupid cocksucking apron. Why is that a thing? The fucking banana peels are real. Oh, I'm shitting out bananas everywhere I go. If you want to see racing videos like these. Can there be one good race this year? That's all I fucking ask. Ty Dillon's called me out. Oh, man. Worthless ass, shitty fucking racing package. Get this shit the fuck away from anywhere near the NASCAR Spring Cup Series. It's the same song and dance every single week. Why do I even care? It's a fucking dumb. Or if you want to watch classic raging like these... It was the god damn motherfucking engine of all of them! No research! Goddamn fucking Joey Legato won the goddamn fucking Daytona 500! Fuck! 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 Ah! 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 Are you fucking serious? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? Are you fucking serious? God fucking damn it, Matt Tift! You fucking absolute failure of a fucking driver! You can't fucking drive! No! 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 Fuck you! Ah! 
Then what are you doing? Go check out the Kamikaze Games YouTube channel. To find the Kamikaze Games YouTube channel, just go to youtube.com and type in the search bar Kamikaze Games. That is spelled K-A-M-I-K-A-Z-E-G-A-M-E-S. Check him out right now, otherwise he will come to your house and punch you in the face. That is Kamikaze Games. Kamikaze Games. I'm so glad I found this guy. He cracks me up. Thank you. Thank you, YouTube masters. Okay, let's see what we got to drink. Ah, oh, fucking perfect. Ah, oh, some good old Powerade. Delicious. No, not really. Powerade, the most overrated drink ever made. Go to your local store and see for yourself. Welcome back here at Michigan International Speedway for the LifeLock.com 400 as we are back to live action. And right now, James McLeod is your current race leader after all the pit stops that took place. Although, like I said earlier, I've got a feeling that we're going to see them come into pit road again in about six, seven, eight laps from now. So they are not done with pit stops today, and that's for darn sure. Nonetheless, however... James McLeod managed to get the lead from Sakuli while they were racing on track. And now Sakuli's under attack from the Joe Gibbs clan of Jake Baskinger and Emmanuel Hartnett. Although Hartnett kind of gave a bit of a harder shove to the 18 off of, or in the middle of the corner. Kind of got him a little bit wobbly, but he's still maintaining momentum. And now the 18's going to get that run on the bottom with the help of the 20 and the 90 of Jackie Tang. So once we cross the line here, we're going to try and do a full field rundown to see where everyone is currently running. But James McLeod is your race leader. Second, Jake Baskinger. Third is Emmanuel Hartnett. Fourth, Sean Galligan. Fifth, Joshua Scooley. Sixth, Jackie Tang. Seventh, Ryan George. Eighth, Preston Plourd. Ninth, Dylan Young. Tenth, Johnny Gardner. 11th is Matt Haas, 12th is Ashlyn Boyd, 13th Dylan Jacobs, 14th Zach Flickinger, 15th Jake Rogers, 16th Jonathan Zorlean, 17th Sky Commons, 18th is James Qualls, 19th Matt McIntyre, 20th Raphael LaDuc, 21st Dougie Shears, 22nd William Brock, 23rd Kyle Matthews, 24th Richard Johnson, 25th Trent Dunham, 26th Joshua Collar, 27th Pichu London, 28th Dylan Thoreau, 29th Seth Cole, 30th Dorian Facepuncher, 31st is Charles Sanford, 32nd Bill, uh, Dylan Pote, 33rd is Phil Parker, 34th is Zachary Fitzwater, 35th is Carson Gum, 36th DJ Curtis, 37th Jay Jefferson, 38th Chris Dollerton, 39th Brandon Gonzalez, 40th is Jessica Sheldon, 41st Tim Fiegel, and then 42nd is William Duncan. Meanwhile, a battle on for the lead up here at the front. Emmanuel Hartnett trying to use the outside lane to clear the 51 of James McLeod, and he did for a second, but now because he left that bottom open, here comes McLeod to try and retake the lead with the help of Sean Galligan. And now it's three wide for the lead as Sean Galligan leaves the 51 hanging. As Galligan's trying to go for the lead for himself. And Galligan trying to go for his second win this season. Currently seventh in points. Currently in the hunt for the chase. But he's wanting to get more to make sure that he does manage to get in. But yeah, we'll know for sure by the next couple races who would be locked into the chase via points by the time we get to Darlington. As they're four wide for fourth. But they are giving each other room and Sakuli just continues to fall further down the racetrack. Double checking to see if anybody's come into pit road yet and 
nobody has, but right now McLeod has that top spot. But Hardnett trying to use the bottom now to try and get the lead from the 51. And it's side by side to the line, but I think McLeod is going to be able to hang on for now. But the 20 car is not going to give up that easily. Emmanuel Hartnett, this season, he has had a mediocre season. He's 21st in the point standings. No top fives. In fact, he's the highest driver in the point standings without a single top five finish. He has two top ten runs. Right now, he's having the best race of his season so far. However, I see a couple cars slowing down. Green flag pit stops round number two. As they come in the pit with coming the five laps to go. So this is really going to make things very interesting to say the least as to who is going to be able to get to the lead after all this is over. Now what some of these drivers definitely don't want is a caution. Because if a caution were to come out as a result of all this, it could cause quite a bit of problems with scoring. And now here come the leaders. Although quite a few cars elected to stay out an extra lap. Now I'd be amazed if some of these guys running up here can manage to stretch it out the rest of the way. I highly doubt that they can because it's less than four to go. But you never know what could happen. But let's see if any of these guys are going to slow down and come in. It looks like they are getting ready to come in. I can tell from how they were wiggling trying to slow down. And yes, here comes everybody else who stayed out on track. Baskinger was the first one that came into pit road. And he was the first one of the first group of cars to come out. Now, will he be able to cycle around everyone else I don't know it's gonna be close but the 18 is definitely gaining momentum fast although you got Jake Rogers who somehow some way managed to get ahead of a lot of drivers but Baskinger's strategy of pitting earlier is seemingly starting to work out a little bit in his favor as he's now if things were to cycle around he'd be fourth however there's a big gap Separating the 56 on back to the 20 and 66. But man, I tell you, it's going to get really interesting once everything gets cycled around. However, Matt Haas might be in the catbird seat. Because he came out of the pits first of the last group. And he's still hanging on strong with his momentum as we're getting ready to come to two laps to go. Preston Plord and Johnny Gardner are right there to him. If they can work together and get a big enough run on the 79, we might see a battle for the win here. Two laps to go. Is Matt Haas the leader? Yes, he is. So now things are starting to get cycled around properly now. And now Haas is under fire from those two cars behind him, the 24 and the 41. However, the 79 was able to hold on for the time being. Looking around the field to see if everybody got out of the pits relatively alright. And it looks like that they did. As we're getting ready to come off a of turn four to take the white flag here at Michigan. And now, white flag waves for Matt Haas. Matt Haas who just got back into the top 30 in points. He is looking for his first win this season. And right now, it doesn't look like anybody's really making any kind of move to try and get around the 79. The closest one to him is the 24, but the 24 is just a little bit too far behind to make anything happen. And it looks like it's going to be the 79 coming out of turn four for the final time today. Checkered flag is starting to wave. Checkered flag out. Matt Haas wins the LifeLock.com 400 at Michigan.
pitch strategy came into play in the end, and it was the 79 of Matt Haas who managed to get him get out of the pits quick enough to maintain the top spot and pull off his first win of the season. What a job. But let's take a look at the rest of the results after all this just concluded. Preston Plourd thought he had something in the end for the 79. Perhaps if we had a few more laps, he might have had a chance at it, but still he should be proud of himself for getting a great run in the second position. Johnny Gardner, who was relatively around 15th to 20th most of the day, manages to come home third. The defending champion Matt McIntyre finishing in fourth, and Emmanuel Hartnett rounding out the top five and fifth. Rafael LeDuc, who we barely talked about at all today, came out of nowhere and got a sixth place finish. Jake Rogers with a solid performance in seventh. William Brock, great run in eighth, and that could help his chances of getting the points lead heading in the next week at Watkins Glen. Jake Baskinger finishing out in ninth, and the highest finishing rookie, Ryan George in 10th. Rest of the top 20 was James McLeod, Kyle Matthews, Jackie Tang, Ashlyn Boyd, Sean Galligan, Jonathan Zorlin, Richard Johnson, Dylan Thoreau, James Qualls, Sky Commons. Rest of the top 30 was Dorian Facepuncher, Joshua Sakuli, Dylan Young, Zach Flickinger, Dylan Poteet, Chris Dollerton, Zachary Fitzwater, Dougie Shears, um, Phil Parker, Trent Dunham, Rest of the top 40, Dylan Jacobs, Pichu London, Carson Gum, DJ Curtis, Charles Sanford, Brandon Gonzalez, Joshua Collar, Jay Jefferson, Seth Cole, Jessica Sheldon, then finishing out the field, William Duncan and Tim Fiegel. So, rough day today for Tim Fiegel, who was second in points coming into the race. But nonetheless, that does it for our coverage here at Michigan. We got three races left until the chase. Next week, we go back to road course racing at Watkins Glen. But until then, here are your results, rookie points, and regular points heading into Watkins Glen. And this is Levi McIntyre, signing off. <laughs>